The heartbeat goes, the riders are off, and Simon, this is a massive charge, of course. Last week we saw a huge crash in the under-23 race, and it was caused by Tom Pidcock. And the riders are safely off the start. Pidcock not getting a good start. He is uh, down in about 15th place as they go through the first bend. Yeah, Pitcock pulled his foot out last week at the uh, Huga Heide World Cup final and, and caused that crash from a front row start. Uh, he's obviously a little bit down off his front row top eight position today as well. But, but he has certainly gone out with a very, very good start. Just saw Sven Nace at the start waiting for Tom Pitcock to line up and he was saying that he's never seen Pitcock this nervous. So be a lot of crashes and uh, everyone will hit the deck at some point. Yeah, everybody's going to fall painful. off, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's quite useful to see further down the field just to see. Our leader, Neuwenhaus, wearing number one in the orange of the Netherlands. Behind him, Benoit, then uh, Eli Isabit, who is the rider in the turquoise, and it's Sieben Wouters who is in fourth place. And Nemours given us a little bit of an indication of how riders might go today. Pitcock, once he gets into the race though, the nerves will go and he just has to uh, ride his race, doesn't he? But he's not having a good start here. Pitcock having to run a lot in this section. This moment in time, Pitcock is 30 seconds behind Joris Nievenhaus. And Eli is a bit is coming back to him at this moment in time. Ooh, is a bit having a little bit of a slip. And bearing in mind you've got the little start bit as well, and the allowance for that means he's just done a 9:37 as the first lap. So I'm pretty sure off that they'll give him a five-lap race. And there, wearing number two is Sieben Wouters, with the two French riders that are with him, Jan Grass and Antoine Benoist. Oh, the two riders are in that little group, but it's... Depending on the nation ranking, as you see, uh, Nieuwenhaus, I think, yeah. Big crash for Nievenhaus. And has he got his rear gear intact? Hopefully all is OK. He's having to run a long time there. Nievenhaus now at the front. Looking pretty urgent. He'll be happy with the way things are going so far, though. The kind of thing that can make a difference, for sure. I don't know what he was doing there. I think he was talking to his mechanics in the pit there. He's looking across the course. These two riders. One going for the pits, one not. And Nieuwenhaus will go for the pits to just make sure that bike is OK. And it is significant. It's a few seconds there. Yep. It's a slow, uh, it's a slow pit lane. He looks pretty calm. That little rut is not as uh, claggy as it was yesterday at this moment. It's a little bit wetter in that section, but is a bit now, is going on the attack. Four seconds now to the front riders in that half lap since the, uh, since the finish line through the pits where we get our second split. Two wins in the World Cup this year. Just things didn't go his way last year and Pidcock yet again on this little section. Looks that way. So it's a bit then, downhill. Shoulders the bike again. He's had a good season, you know, this big battle between him and Pidcock has, has really set the under-23 season on fire this year. And it, it's been it's been Pidcock that's that's come out on top in the World Cups. He's a bit had the, the upper hand on a couple of the Belgian series races, but uh, again, he's ridden more of them. Pitcock, I think he's done, what, 21, 22 races this season. These riders tend to take a, a training camp break in kind of early December, sort of between a couple of the World Cups and come back to try and get a little bit of the, the volume back in and, and, oh, he's having trouble there. Oops. Both of them are having trouble. Both he's a bit having all sorts of problems with his gears there, and I think that's... Oops, and Nieuwenhaus. He's also got a that's problem a shoe in the problem. pits. Oh, yeah. he's changed shoes. Wow, OK. All right, that's <laughs> what he was talking to the pit crew about. Well, they said that was Sieben Wouters on the thing, but it's not Sieben Wouters, is it? You can see the faces telling that maybe this is a race that has put him really into hurt because at this moment he is not riding with the same, the same ease that he has done over the last few weeks. It's going to take some... Some coming back to, to get back in the medal hunt, I think, there for Pitcock. Yeah. 
This is the thing, isn't it? I mean, there's so much pressure on a rider who is that sort of age, but he's 48 seconds, 53 seconds back now. Uh, if he does come back, that's a big learn, but even though he'll come out of this race with a huge learning experience. Eli Isabit of Belgium is the leading rider. He's having a good day. Oops, <laughs> he's not having a good day. Bit of a crash then. Is a bit going well, but a little topple as he went round that off canvas section. Nievenhaus in the orange of the Netherlands is in second place. And Jan Grass is in third right now for France at 27 seconds. It's uh, incredibly steep. So Ellie is a bit is having a great day so far. He's going ahead of Joris Nievenhaus by 15 seconds. And Grass now at 28 seconds, although that looks to be a closing just a little bit more. Is a bit over the ramp. Nice and aero as he goes through, trying to get as low as he possibly can. Crosses the line with a lap of 10.15 at that time. So he slowed down by six seconds, but nothing significant for Ellie Isabit. Isabit now into the pits yet again as a bike change. Switches over. He's so rutted in this section now. There's Neiman House. These two riders having a real battle now, Simon, to decide who's going to take the medal. Here is Thomas Pidcock. Oof, yeah, this is not his day. Everything has uh, everything's gone wrong. He's it's got to him now. Yeah, there's some frustration there. Themselves, they'll uh, they'll take confidence from what somebody else has used, but they they. That's what they've spent the last three or four days working on. And again, it's not a hard decision for a course like this. Ellie is a bit going to cross the line again. And he is going to be in the lead, a 10-18 lap. So three seconds slower than the lap before. 10-18. Is a bit goes plunging down that little bank. Now he's on the uphill section. Forcing that bike forward. This is the battle for silver between these two riders. Isabit is thriving on this course. He's got this nailed. He's decided to run this little section. It's much, much faster for him to do that. That's great racing there. 30 seconds now is the lead for Ellie is a bit of Belgium ahead of uh, Joris Nievenhaus and Jan Grass, and behind them there's really no one coming back. Adam Tupelik now at 118, Antoine Benoist in fifth at 130, Tisarts in sixth at 133, and Jacob uh, Dorangoni of Italy now in tenth place at 252. Getting some questions about where. Let's give you some other nations. So we've got uh, Dan Tullet of Great Britain in 22nd, Kevin Kuhn of uh, Switzerland at 23rd. And then further on down, we have got Ben Turner of Great Britain, 27th, Grant Elwood, United States of America, 29th. New nations popping up all the time. The actual total number of nations, I think we've got 24, 25 nations here. Yeah. It's about the maximum we've ever had as Cyclocross World Championships. Up the hill, catches the Japanese rider we were just talking about, Hijiri Oda. Ellie is a bit, will have been motivated by seeing Sana Kant retain her title. Like, oh, little slide. His legs no. have gone, you could see it on that run previously, he's empty. It's a good job, there's another, another lap to go, but he's timed it perfectly, he's got everything out in this race. He's looking around, don't worry. There is no one there. He's got daylight, he's got time in hand. He can wheelie all the way up this finishing straight if he wants to. He can get off the bike, he can celebrate. Ellie is a bit, is the world champion. He looks around, he sits up, he gives Belgium their second world title here in Valkenburg. Ellie is a bit, world champion. Fantastic racing. Behind him then, Joris Nievenhaus has got rid of Jan Grass. Elie Isabit is celebrating. 
Rainbow bands for Belgium. Joris Nievenhaus takes the silver. He had to change shoes. That might have cost him a little bit of time. He took the race on second place and a bronze medal for the Frenchman, Jan Gras. Bronze medal for France. A really emotional moment for that young man. Fantastic performance by him. The arrival of Adam Tupelik of the Czech Republic, 126 down in fourth place. The gaps in this under 23 race are huge. Heading up to the line now, Tisart. He says thank you to all the fans who've cheered him on this season. Around 144 down. Behind him, Antoine Benoist. This was the moment when Ellie Isabit decided to take the race on. I think it was that gap he got when he didn't go into the pits and uh, Newenhouse went in and then got a handful of seconds. And then obviously with the problem with Newenhouse with his shoe. That was it. Race over. Possible to get a few more seconds there. And then from there, there was no coming back for Newenhouse. No, that was the end of the race. Ellie is a bit celebrates. The under 23 world champion says he's number one. There is no question. Today he showed just how strong he is and what a great cyclocross rider he is. Sven van Torn out behind him, the new Belgian national coach, took over from Rudy De Beek. Yes. Well done, Eli. Uh, you're bringing back that title two years after Zolder. How do you feel? Uh, yeah, I can't believe it at this moment. I uh, worked really hard for it, and uh, in the race it was just like a dream, so uh, I don't... Yeah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Uh, you crossed the line with uh, almost half a, half a minute uh, gap between you and uh, Joris. Uh, uh -huh. uh, how did you do that? How, how did you manage to, to be so consistent during that racing? Yeah, uh, I knew it was really hard. Joris took a really, really fast start. But I knew from the previous races that he was better in the beginning than at the end. So I just wanted to keep one tempo, and uh, but at the end... It was better to do it because it's really hard with all the all the running sections. So uh, I'm very happy at this moment. Uh, tell us about the conditions, the weather conditions, snow at the end, a bit more sticky today than uh, compared to yesterday. How did you feel with the race and the turf? Yeah, um, when I uh, did the first lap this morning, it was very good for me. Um, yesterday it was a little bit too slippery to keep really a high um, yeah, high wattage, wattage. So uh, yeah, um, today it was it was really better to to have a big a big gear and and just pushing on the pedals and that's really my kind of races. Uh, which sections were you feeling more comfortable? The wooden one, uh, the off the cumber, the last one? Uh, oh, the, the the flat sections and uh, the running sections. Yoris was really good at the descent. Um, I had a little crash in the descent, but then uh, I just. I just uh, didn't take any risks at the end, so uh, I'm really happy to, to just keep going. And, and I took some seconds every lap, and that was uh, just how I planned it. After Sunny's title yesterday, it's a new title for Belgium. That's a, a great performance for the country. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Uh, definitely with the new Bonds coach, so uh, Sven it, it will be really happy. So, uh, And I'm happy, and my team is happy, so it's a good day today. Congratulations, Ellie. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Nice insight from Ellie is a bit. Number one. Yeah, interesting to talk, hear a bit talking about the consistent lap times and for him just to keep that same tempo going. If you look at his laps, they are very consistent. I think they're a 10.03, a 10.15, a 10.16, a 10.24. That first lap by uh, Neuenhaus was a 9.37. It's, uh, yeah. That didn't help uh, the Pitcock situation, I don't think. 
Here's the results of the UCI Cyclocross World Championship for under 23 riders. Ellie Isabet wins in 50 minutes 54. And we run through the top 20. And as we count down through the top 30, it will motivate Wout Van Aert when he knows that his teammate has uh, secured the rainbow jersey. The podium presentation of the under-23 men's UCI World Cyclocross Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the bronze medal representing France of the derde plaats, winnaar van de bronze medaille uit Frankrijk. A geweldig applaus for Jan Graaf. Jan Graaf. Jan Graaf of France takes the bronze medal. Silver to Joris Nievenhaus. Kelly is a bit world champion. He is receiving his rainbow jersey and his golden medal out of the hands of Mr. Harald Niedemann Hansen, member of the UCI Management Committee. The Eerke Bok Draai and Gouden Medaille uitgereikt door Mr. Harald Niedemann Hansen, lid van het management committee van de UCI. Tweede wereldwinder in deze categorie, gouden medaille. En de regenbocht daar inmiddels op de schouders. De man die het vandaag haalde, Eli Isabit. Eli Isabit in de rainbow jersey. Well, the emotion of the moment gets to Ellie is a bit. That meant an awful lot to him. Simon, great race, great champion. Yeah, very much so. Very good race.